Hi friends, I was all set to go film my biophile skincare routine, skincare minimalism, microbiome focused skincare musings video, but in my heart the video that I really wanted to do is this video. Today's video, which is a Mercedes Shops special edition for the Beauty Awards project that I'm tackling next, which is the Indie Beauty Expo Best in Show 2019 Awards, which is a very intimidating list. It's quite long, but I'm going to tell you my approach. So in the in 2020, I had for about six months tested all of the A Night for Green Beauty 2019 award winners, and I didn't do a video like this. Basically, the front end just showing you the products, unboxing them, and maybe doing a little bit of first impressions of packaging and like initial product testing. And that's what I wanna to do today. Now you're not gonna see the review, kind of the final product for at least another four or five months. I decided to tackle the Indie Beauty Expo Best in Show Awards because it's a well-known green beauty event. They obviously did not have an in-person event in 2020, but they seem to have a pretty extensive panel of reviewers. I know that Jeannie Jarno was one of the expert evaluators on this panel, so part of what I like to do in undertaking these kinds of projects is interrogate the metrics for which these products were selected and deconstructing what the awareness is around how these award lists are made. Are they really just kind of a way for brands to market their products? Having us understand that oftentimes while you can discover amazing products from these award lists, it's not really a sample of a universe of products. They're selecting products from people that have entered or paid money to become part of their pool of products. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that, but as we know, brands go on to use the little online sticker of approval to then market their products. You know, this one in Indie Beauty Expo Best in 2019 Awards. So basically what I wanna do is test all the products for myself, put my own independent reviewing spin on this, and let you know what I find. So if you'd like to see this in action and learn all about the A Night for Green Beauty 2019 award winners from which I found, I think at least three really amazing products that I continue to use and love from that list of I think eight or 10. And Sue Mercedes obsessively touching her hair. <laughs> okay, so I took a look at this list. It's very lengthy. It goes across a number of different categories. I decided to make it manageable, that I would extract out the skincare. I've spent the last several weeks taking advantage of New Year's deals and picking up these products with my own money. So depending on how you categorize and count products, you know, is a lip balm considered part of skincare? Is a brow treatment considered part of skincare? If I take a, a broad approach to that, there are 12 products in the skincare category. Two of them I have already or am already using, the Province Apothecary Brow Treatment, which was actually also, it's a crossover product with the A Night for Green Beauty 2019 awards, and I personally do not care for the product and I don't think that it's very effective. So it's interesting to me that it's on two awards lists now. So I won't be covering that again. I'll just refer people to the A Night for Green Beauty awards. The Biophile Root Bionic Serum, was in Indie Beauty Expo Best in Show award winner in 2019. I'm currently using that product. It was featured in the Beauty Heroes box in November. And like I said, I'm planning a bigger video on Biophile, demoing it, using it, talking about microbiome skincare. So I won't be showing that today. And then as far as the lip balm, they had a company called La La Leaf, which I'm not going to be picking up and reviewing because it has a high concentration of CBD in it, which is just an ingredient that I personally have no interest in, in skincare. I know that some people really like it. After reading about it and thinking about it, I just decided that based on ethos and personal, strong personal preference, I'm not gonna be trying that one. Now, everything else with the exception of one product I have here before me and I'm going to tell you about, the one product that I don't currently have, I've been holding off on it. It's one of the more expensive products is the Henwa Organics Toner. It's like a toning essence type of product. 
It's hard to get a hold of. There's actually no US retailers that carry it. I found a Canadian retailer and ordering directly from the re their website, Henua Organics has been out of stock. It's, I believe it's a Scandinavian company. Now everything else I have, so let's get into it. Tracy Martin Amla Purifying Cleanser. This is a 1.69 fluid ounce bottle, I think. Looks like this. I have heard of this brand. I've heard good things. I believe she's a New York City based esthetician and went on to start this line. Is that right? Born at the New York spa, trusted by royalty, both Hollywood and actual, Tracy Martin's skincare has been leading the clean beauty revolution since 2000. The pioneering treatments are aimed at defying gravity and improving skin's elasticity. Okay, fine. So it says this revolutionary concentrate goes beyond cleansing to actively improve appearance of skin. I kind of never understand, honestly, why brands put that much into a, a cleanser. It makes much more sense in a serum or a leave-on, in my opinion. But this has turmeric, amla berry, which are concentrated sources of vitamin C. Um, I believe it's an emulsifying cleanser, but directions are apply, apply twice daily to mildly but thoroughly cleanse the skin. Yeah, so it does lather and emulsify off. Let's just do a tiny little test on the hand. I mean, I can always use, oh wow, always use a cleanser. So kind of goes on like a gel and then yeah, it does kind of foam up. So this will be interesting. I don't really use lathering or foaming type of cleansers. Just that on the hand feels like relatively effervescent. Now there's an exfoliant here, Shefali Organic Pineapple and Peppermint Facial Exfoliant. I had to kind of reserve my knee jerk reaction to think that this might not be very good for my skin. But given the inclusion of pineapple this is an ayurvedic skincare company too this is a brightening face scrub and fruit enzyme peel to leave your skin glowing with neem saffron turmeric peppermint and pineapple part of also why i was really drawn to the indie beauty expo awards list is because i hadn't really tried very many of the products let alone heard of the brands i mean some of them i had but m the majority of these products and brands are brand new to me so this packaging is really beautiful oh we've got a leakage situation hold please so the jar was definitely overfilled i don't i this probably is made in a lab i would assume it doesn't look like it's necessarily like an artisanal or bespoke type of product it smells really nice you know it actually reminds me of something i don't quite know what does have some little scrubby bits in it. Those are hit or miss with my skin personally, so we're just gonna have to see. I'm much more apt to use a product like this, just like kind of gently applied and left on to let the enzymes kind of do their work as opposed to going in and using the physical abrasion of the scrubbies. So aside from that little bit of product overflow, I think this looks quite lovely. Now there are, oh shoot, there's also a cleansing balm. I should have done that before I did the scrub. Uh, so I guess this should have been the first product I showed you and then the Tracy Martin cleanser second because this would, I'm sure, be the first step. So this is the Vanilla or Vanilla Co. Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm. I got the nourishing version. I think that they might have others. So basically what I did was I just looked at the photo on the Indie Beauty Expo Best in Show landing page and I picked the exact product that uh, was shown. This brand, which I'm kind of having a hard time getting this little seal off of, they had like kind of a number of different cleansing products and so I went for the nourishing version of their cleansing it's really really hard to to read anything on this holographic packaging i don't know if this is k beauty it's asian beauty of some variety as there are uh, characters on the side it's nice packaging it was not expensive at all i think that this was 20 something dollars so definitely kind of like a more affordable type of situ i'm gonna go ahead and peel this top off okay looks like Smells odd. It smells like a little sterile. I'm gonna go ahead and try a little bit, see what, what the texture is like. So it doesn't actually have that much give. It's pretty stiff, but obviously like once you get it on the hand. Oh, okay. It just smells kind of weird in the packaging. On my hand, I like it. Kind of has like a Vaseline type of texture. I don't 
know quite yet. I'm gonna have to do, you know, a facial massage or what have you with it. I also wonder, gosh, it has a, a really interesting texture. I don't know if this is rinsable. Why don't we do a little, I'm gonna see if I can get it to kind of emulsify. I'm just gonna have this OSHA mist hanging here. Yep, it turns into like a milky consistency and probably rinses clean. I mean, cue me constantly lamenting that no one does traditional cleansing balms anymore. They're all rinsable. It's just a bummer, honestly. They, people need to do more non-rinsable ones because I think people will come to understand that, I don't know, that's how, in my opinion, that's how my skin gets the most benefit from a, a balm cleanser. But that left my skin really, really soft, but I'm... I don't know about that scent. I keep kind of going waffling on it, going back and forth. Okay, I also got a couple of little samples from that company. The hydration toner, which I probably will not use, and a hydration boosting serum, which I'm gonna guess has hyaluronic acid in it, so I probably will not be using that because I'm trying to break up with hyaluronic acid and it is in everything. <laughs> Topic for another day. All right, let's talk about this mud mask from the company Wish. This is the Wish Renewing Mud Mask with Bacuchiol. Again, I'm not that nuts about Bacuchiol. I'm kind of picky about what products I'll use with it in it. Again, not very expensive. These A lot of these products were quite affordable, so a bit of a departure from... <laughs> I was gonna say a bit of a departure from what I, what I do here, which I know can sometimes seem, you know, pretty bougie with the products that I test and try. So introducing our Renewing Mud Mask, just a thin layer, less than a minute, and a circular rub provides a gentle resurfacing exfoliation to reveal smoother, softer, more youthful looking skin. Oh, hello there, gorgeous, we've missed you. <laughs> okay. Again, unclear why Bacuchiol needs to be in a product you're gonna have on your skin for a minute. It just doesn't make a ton of sense to me. I can understand Bacuchiol in a serum that you're gonna use every night uh, and is gonna stay on the skin and absorb to some extent. And that's when you're gonna kind of get the benefits of what the inclusion of that ingredient would provide. At least, you know, that's my understanding. Here's packaging. You don't see a ton of products packaged like this. I don't hate it. Here's what we've got going on. Mmm, smells like Paul Mitchell hair care. If anyone remembers Paul Mitchell hair care from the 90s. Has that scent of like a salon shampoo. That's, that's what it smells like to me. The texture of that is nice. I mean, I, I would definitely have use for a product like this if I wanted to do a quick kind of clarifying, I would use it in place of a second cleanse. I would take off my makeup and do a first cleanse with, you know, something like this. I would kind of have this function as a second cleanse, flash mask, leave it on for a minute, as the instructions would imply, and then jump in the shower and rinse it off. So this will be very easy for me um, to test and try. I'm excited about these. Now, I'm not much of a sheet mask person. I like the Five Vienna Divine Biocellulose masks for sheet masks, and that's like kind of the only one. Those are kind of the only ones that I think are really worth it. The Orgade ones are okay. The Wamisa masks, I can kind of take it or leave it with. And I just don't try, I don't try very many. It's it's not a concept that I think is that great. You know, they are pretty wasteful. So I have so many other products that I would use in place of a sheet mask. Now this is the company Eleni Chris. I think their branding is very gorgeous. I love the sacred geometry in their logo. These single face masks in glow. Now they do, cause like some other things they have like an age defying mask or something scandinavian glacial water c3 oil trademarked cloudberry that's an ingredient that red flower uses in some products i really like and it's in a lot of fit glow skincare as well these are meant to be brightening and moisturizing for radiant skin the next time i take a bath i'll be to, i got two to try um they also had a pack of the three face masks that they do, which I was gonna get, but it was sold out. So I just picked up two of the ones that actually won the award from the awards list. So that's what we're trying. 
Uh, okay, we have a serum. Again, this was like quite inexpensive. This is the Spoiled Bee 10% Fruit Enzyme Serum meant to be glow boosting. So this says, using nature's very best ingredients and 10% fruit enzymes, this daily serum will brighten, deeply rejuvenate, and give your skin that healthy glow. Shake well and apply three to four drops of serum in the evening as part of your skincare routine, massaging into the skin. So the first ingredient is plum seed oil. So that's going to be something like the Le Prunier oil, similar concept. Second ingredient is glycerin, which I love. That's an ingredient that I now have started preferring to sodium hyaluronate or hyaluronic acid in skincare. Passion flower fruit extract, kiwi fruit extract, mango steam. I mean, the ingredients sound really nice. Pineapple fruit extract. Sounds pretty great. Let's try it. I kind of want to do the other hand since I have already loaded up, loaded up products on my left hand. Let's see. Reminds me texturally of, ooh, it smells exactly like Le Prunier. You can smell the plum oil for sure. Texture wise reminds me a bit of the original Provise Nutrify 1 to 6 tonic. Very interesting. I'm quite intrigued by this because it ha goes on kind of like that, almost like a hyaluronic acid type of product, but then it definitely has an oily, an oily consistency and residue. I, when I see a product like this, I'm interested where they're sourcing their ingredients from because obviously not all plum seed oils are going to be created equal. But yeah, if you like the Le Prunier oil, this is like a fraction of the cost, and it has a bunch of other, bunch of other things in it. So. I'm excited it came in this little bag and it was all wrapped up like this in a little mailer with my name handwritten out love it okay there's an eye cream again this is one of the more expensive items on the list in addition to the henwa organics toner this is the verify or verify but i think it's verify 2020 phytoglycogen and peptides eye cream. I thought this looked uh, great. I was gonna get just, they do a little travel size, which is kind of all I needed, but I don't know. I just kind of sprung for the big one. I was feeling spendy. I mean, what can I say? Phytoglycogen helps reveal bright and even skin tone, deep hydration. It has peptides, niacinamide, cucumber. Okay, love this bottle. I think it's gorgeous. Feel, this kind of feels like the most expensive product that I've tried so far from this list. Let's pump a bit out. Okay, so it's just kind of a, ooh, very watery cream, pretty much unscented, trying to find places that don't already have a fragranced product on them. Yeah, it's, it's unscented, which, you know, it should be. Um, the texture feels cooling feels like it has a high water content, feels quite plush, not like a heavily silicone-y type of feel at all, it just feels like a pretty light, but at the same time rich, like there's a richness to it, and the finish is quite plumping, so that seems like it'll be very promising for an eye cream. All right, one more thing to tell you about, and then we're going to talk about some of the auxiliary beauty products that I went ahead and picked up for a little bonus that I'm gonna be doing. Okay, so this is the Codex Beauty Skin Superfood. I believe this is a moisturizer. Yeah, this is. Okay, love the packaging. I think that I love this kind of streamlined look. Um, I love the branding of this. Uh, I think it feels modern and contemporary and fresh. So this has Bio Complex and Immortel, a hydrating and nourishing treatment cream for face, hands, and body. Love that because I don't use a lot of moisturizers on my face or I'm very picky about the ones that I will use on my face. You know, I can always use a hand cream or I can always use a body moisturizer. Okay, so this is water, almond oil, lactobacillus ferment, heart seas herb. Wow, I'm, I'm learning about a bunch of new ingredients that I've like never heard of or extracts. It says Ireland. I guess this is an Irish company. I didn't actually know that. Love, love, love. Similar uh, packaging to the Wish Beauty Mask. I really, really like this. So let's try a little bit. I'm going to pump out here. Looks like this. And then let's go ahead and try it on my arm. It doesn't have the best scent. Kind of smells like a fruit roll up, actually. The texture is, is quite nice, though. And if you're just using a cream as a finishing step 
and say like you want to tap a little bit of this over this which is quite fragrant with the plum oil i mean i think it's totally you know the the scent or lack of scent or kind of weird plastic fruit roll up scent is not not a deal breaker at all if any of you have tried this tell me if you think it smells like a fruit roll up from our 80s and 90s youth do they still make fruit roll ups Okay, so that's the skincare plus the Henua Organics Toner, which will be coming, I'm gonna order it, you know, this week or next week or something. So I'm gonna get to testing all of this stuff. Now, that's what felt manageable for me to do for a YouTube review. However, I was personally interested in some of the other products, some of the makeup, like the deodorant, some of the hair care. So I've picked some of that up. There's a couple of other outstanding things, namely the Nature Labs. I think that's what it's called. Tokyo Nature Labs. It's the shampoo and conditioner. And then I am going to place an order for the Nala, N-A-L-A -A deodorant. I'm just trying to decide what customization I want, like which basically which one. They have a personalized option. So I'm going to be trying that deodorant as well. So then I picked up some other things I'm gonna show you. Now, what I'm gonna do with these products, basically the everything but skincare, I'm gonna film, at the same time that I film the review of all the skincare, I'm gonna film a separate review for my patrons because I'm always trying to find special and interesting ways to say thank you to them and just provide something a little extra, something beyond what I would do for YouTube or my podcast. So if that is of interest to you, I'll of course publicize it you know, probably six months from now, but there's so much going on on Patreon. It's just patreon.com slash musique if you would like to both support my work and also gain access to tons of extra stuff that I end up doing. So I'm going to be trying the Virtue Correct Unfrizz Cream. I thought that this sounded promising. I think it's kind of like a leave-in, but also just sort of a styling product. The branding reminds me a bit of Vapor. Is that what I want to say? Vapor Organics? Isn't it kind of similar? It's kind of the same color blue and somewhat of the same typeface. But this is, uh, the directions are to apply a quarter size amount to clean, damp hair, work through evenly, style as usual. So let's try just a tiny bit of this. This is the travel size of this one. Oh, it has a little stopper on it. Let's open this up. I think this little travel size was $20 and then they do a bigger one for $40. Mm, has a really nice scent. The <clears throat> the little comment that they made about this product, whoever the reviewer was, ooh, had mentioned the scent. Oh my gosh, it's nice. Woo! Reminds me immediately of. Does, did any of you? Do any of you remember Tokyo Milk fragrances? I had learned about them through like kind of a little knickknack shop in Providence, Rhode Island when I was in graduate school and I became so addicted with Tokyo Milk. I think they still, they for a while they were stocking in Sephora, but they discontinued a lot of their earlier perfumes, which came in these really cute, beautiful bottles and Ex Libris was my favorite. This kind of reminds me a bit of the Tokyo Milk scent profile. It's, wow, I like that. I like that a lot, just the smell alone. Okay, now a couple of things from Clove and Hollow. The award winner is the Liquid Skin Tint Lightweight Foundation. This was kind of tough because I wasn't that nuts about the color options, honestly. I ended up going with the shade four. It's like kind of there, supposed to be their light neutral undertone. To me, it still looks quite peachy. We'll see, this seemed to be the best option for me. Actually, let's try a little bit now not like overly nuts about this packaging to be completely honest with you because I think it's going to have the tendency to get really messy yeah this already is kind of looking like it's going to be too dark for me but that's okay because I can thin it out with a moisturizer I have juice beauty cc cream that's a little bit actually that I think it might be okay and it's I think it's also kind of a somewhat self-correcting type of product in that you know, kind of once you blend it in, I think it's going to be, it's going to be okay. The main issue with this, which I can already tell on the back of my hands, and this is a, an issue across the board with foundation or base products, but I feel especially ones that have uh, like a mineral content in them, which I'm assuming this one does. So this does have dimethicone in it. Do you remember when dimethicone was like the boogeyman of green beauty? So yeah, titanium dioxide, iron oxides. I feel when products have that, uh, they just can look, you can see the particle separation or the particle suspension in the formula. If you have like texture or you're dry, you can just end up seeing that on the skin. I've had this issue with so many, in particular serum foundations, but I can kind of already tell on the back of my hand, like the finish of this is 
I don't know. I'm probably going to have to play around with it, but you know, all for the sake of research. I love this whole kind of testing and nitpicking and reviewing process. Now, while I was at it, I could not resist trying one of their lip velvets, which I've been meaning to try for a really long time. And yes, this is what is on my lips today. I have not bought a new bold lip product in a long, long time. And this is the Lip Velvet in the shade Napa, I guess because it's this beautiful wine color. I had done this makeup on a live stream earlier today and did the inaugural application of this. I really like it. It is kind of, it does dry down completely, which I wasn't sure at the time that I applied it that it would. It dries down completely, but it feel, you can definitely feel it on the lips. It's kind of like a heavy feeling, whereas, for example my Spella liquid lip tints, you can't read, they're a little more weightless on the lips. And some of the more conventional liquid lipsticks, the way those formulas have developed, they, you can't feel them. And this almost feels like it's going to start crumbling off the lips at all. I mean, I think it still probably looks okay. I've had it on about an hour at this point. We'll see how it fares through eating and drinking and how it kind of wears down throughout the day. But the color, I think, is stunning. And then they had a free gift going with any Cloven Hollow purchase, uh, a lipstick in the shade Damsel. So at first I thought this packaging was nice, but now, like, to be honest with you, it feels a little bit cheap. It is magnetic, but it just doesn't feel doesn't feel as substantial as I kind of wanted it to, <laughs> I guess. But this is the color. I'm going to go ahead and swatch it. Very pretty color. It's like a raspberry red. I love reds like this. It's like a pink undertoned red. I have so many blue undertoned reds. And so finding almost like a raspberry pinky red um, Fit Glow Love, that lipstick is very, very pretty kind of pinky red that I think is really beautiful. This is like a nice Valentine's Day lipstick actually. So I'll probably try this very soon on um, like my next live stream or something. All right, almost done as I do a quick hair zhuzh. All right, I'm quite excited about Saint the Cosmetics. I've heard about this brand a lot. The winner was the eyeshadow and I believe it was, so they have two eyeshadow formulas. They have a matte and a shimmer formula and i believe it was the shimmer formula that won and then i also got a free they were doing similar to cloven hollow they were doing a free new year's promotion with a uh throwing in a lipstick with every order for free so this is the velvet lip cream in the shade new york which i'll open in a minute i decided to try one of each a matte and a shimmer now i struggled with this because for a while i was like should i get one of the, they have these palettes Somewhat reminiscent of the Jane Iredale eyeshadow palettes, if any of you remember those. I mean, the packaging of these, really, I mean, beautiful. It reminds me, I guess, of maybe Victoria Beckham. I've never tried any of that makeup, but that's kind of what it looks like. So I think this is the shimmer shade. It's Angel Eyes. And I just was not, it kind of looks like a nothing color. I was not that nuts about the shimmer options. Is that, wait, let me see. This is Wild Thing, which I think is like a mauve matte. Yeah. Now this is much more a Mercedes color. This is something I could use all over my lid. I could probably honestly even use this on my face as like a contour. So I was more into their matte shades. However, it was the shimmer shade that won the award. So let me do just a little bit of quick, quick swatching of angel eyes. Ugh, I'm kind of unhappy with this. You're not going to be able to really see it. Well, maybe you can. It's just, it's not going to do much for me. I don't think I'll probably try it all over my lid, but I'm a little underwhelmed with that. Honestly, this I'm more excited about wild thing, the matte formula. Yeah. Oh, it's a little bit browner than I kind of thought, but that's, that I just think is going to be a really versatile, a really versatile shadow. Love that. The packaging is not that weighty, but that's okay. Okay. Let's quickly look at this lipstick. And then I have one more thing to show you that I think is going to make you glad that you stayed around till the end of this video and my long verbose way of talking about products. Okay, so here's this lipstick. It's pretty. It's a little bit like kind of retro, a little bit art deco maybe. Um, the lipstick packaging feels a little bit more substantial maybe than the eyeshadow. Now this looks like it's going to be more of an orangey red. I should not have taken off the swatch of the Cloven Hollow. They're real similar. I think I might like the Cloven Hollow one a little bit better just on undertone alone. Let's do them side by side. 
yeah this one is a little brighter the cloven hollow right here a bit brighter this one is a little bit more saturated i mean they're very similar i would just say the cloven hollow is a little bit more slightly electric saint cosmetics also sent just a little sample of their aloe vera primer it's called angel face i don't ever use a primer because of all the skincare i use i just never never find them to be necessary and i there's just not something i use but that i mean it i guess it feels nice okay so the final thing i have here maybe kind of the whole reason that i really wanted to do this video instead of the skincare video that i was planning are the nail polishes that won the 2019 indie beauty expo best in show awards uh this is the company emily heath get ready for a packaging mind blown swoon type of situation okay let me show you the colored one first so i got one color and the top coat because I'm in need of a new top coat. Now, let me just show you this. I mean, the packaging is gorgeous. I know that that's not the only thing that people evaluate nail polish on. I was, I had shown these on my live stream, I think a couple weeks ago, and people were inquiring about the brush. So I feel like I can kind of work with any nail polish brush so that's not as much of a concern to me I, just, I mean these are $28 a piece it's the most I've ever spent on a nail polish I think maybe I bought some Chanel nail polishes back in the day in like the mid 2000s anyway this is the shade is called the perfect red and it's like a raspberry red it's actually I feel like maybe looking a little orangey red there but it's really in person like kind of a raspberry pinky red. The next manicure I do, I'm definitely going to use this. The little top pops off. So there's the brush. I think it looks pretty easy to work with. The top coat is like this. It's in an opaque bottle. I'm really excited about these. I have not bought new nail polish in quite a long time. Like mine are just kind of going bad. Like my top coats are not setting correctly so it's time to clear them out. My Isla polishes are just getting old so it is something that you should in my opinion maintain a small classic collection of nail polishes and then just use them i mean there's no point in having 50 nail polishes and you're just not going to get through them until they go bad what a nice note to end on thank you so much for being here for my long long video next week is going to be a review of earthwise's three face balms if you aren't subscribed to lamore la musique here on youtube please do subscribe so that you don't miss that and the opportunity to win something amazing um there's going to be three winners so i'm very very excited about that and then in february we'll just be doing our normal beauty heroes reviews i will promise i will do the biophile routine skin minimalism chat i have overflowing empties i have disappointing products i have the works you guys so much coming up i'm so happy to be back busting my butt to do weekly videos i hope you're enjoying them please drop anything in the comments below that you'd like to chat about you know all the other places you can find me at lamore la musique on instagram though i have stopped doing instagram stories on that account i now have a special account for patrons just so that i can not stress so much about what I post and how it's going to potentially upset somebody because we live in a very polarized world at this time. My last podcast episode was an interview with Valerie Granduri of Audacity, so I'll drop the link below if you'd like to go check that out. I will list and link everything discussed in this video down below in the description bar. Thank you so much. I'm cutting myself off. I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.